Hey guys, I'm going to show you a bit about the terrain, plants and the wind speed, how you can get it to look smooth. So I've just loaded a height map from a texture, um, which is uh, this one here. It's 512 by 512. The, the resolution of the texture will generally determine by default the size of the, the level. But at the same time, when you load a height map, you can you can change um, you can change the size of each tile, which sort of changes the the, the local uh, resolution and performance and various things as well. So just the default, without changing anything, just sticking to default, as you can see, performance is actually extremely good. Uh, I was getting you got to remember I'm using a um, <clears throat> video recording software at the moment, so it's dropping the frame rate about 10, 10 to twenty frame rate. So it was. It was showing maximum performance before, 334, uh, which has always been the maximum. It just shows up in, in CopyCube, the frame rate. So it's just, a, I wouldn't run the game at 300 frames a second, but this is just to see how, what things have on performance um, uh, on the uh, on the game and what doesn't, doesn't, doesn't. So this is just a height map with no plants loaded by default, so I didn't select any plants. You can see it's a pretty huge level. Nice, it goes all the way down there. Uh, it's, it's close there, so I'm up a, sort of a, in a corner area, and then all the way down there, there's like a, it's a pretty pretty big map actually. It's huge. Um, this would be a good size level. <clears throat> I'd like to use in my game probably. Uh, if not, probably slightly bigger than that. Um, but yeah, so you can see anyway the performance. I'm not getting any without the uh, screen recorder. I'm getting maximum performance. So. Actually, if you didn't know, the CopyCube Terrain does use an LED system uh, internally in the game engine itself. Uh, that's why it can run pretty damn good. Um, as against 3D Mesh, is um, much harder to get good performance out of that. You can, but it takes a lot more work. Okay, so that's that. You can see it hovers between 300 and 330, depending on where I'm looking. So I'm closer to that edge, so better LODs, less stuff to look at, so it's a bit better performance there. A little bit lower there. Not a huge difference, but yeah, you can see there's a slight difference. The more the more you have to look at, the more it's got to actually um, render. So it's um, but not a massive difference either way. So if I just <clears throat> delete that and do it again with the grass, import height map, same level, <coughs> this one. Uh, I just stick the tile size by default, but you can change that, which is good. Now, if I put grass this time, so we've got grass, and uh, it still looks pretty good. Default grass is a bit wrong because notice how the the grass goes half, halfway up the hillside. That just not doesn't look right. It looks wrong, and when you're up close, it sort of stands up in the air a bit, and it's just yeah, it's not. That's not how it should be. It should be some sort of adjustment for that because it's um, yeah, it doesn't look right at all. If it was just down low on the flatter areas, it would be cool. Anyway, <clears throat> just for performance sake, as you can see, it's it's just a ton of grass everywhere. Just I don't know, thousands of blades of grass or something. Um, yeah, probably a couple of thousand or something. Um, yeah, there's a lot. And we'll just check the performance on that. So let's run that. You can see it has actually a big effect. <clears throat> it's a much bigger effect showing now because I got the frame recording software. But normally it wasn't that bad. It wasn't that bad. It was it was sitting around 200 to 250. Yeah, around 180 to 250 was where it was sitting before. Um, so it's still considerable impact. It's not. I mean, you could use it if it's still you know way above 60. You, mean, you really only need to run your game at 60 frames a second to look really good you know for most things uh, but if you want optimal performance um, yeah there's that that it will have an impact uh, if I was going to use the default grass setup I would manually go through all the hills and remove it from the 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 angled hillsides a little bit because uh, it, yeah, it doesn't look right um, so it's um, you can see it's had a pretty big effect on performance <coughs> actually quite massive with the screen recording software on, that is. Um, so, in any case, 
I'll just pick a spot. Now I've got coded into this and I won't move. So there's... That's weird how it keeps uh, moving around a lot, the frame rate. But anyway, um, I'll pick a spot and I'll press my P. And while well, I've created a code that will move the, the grass, it'll speed up and slow down, speed up and slow down. And I'll keep doing that. Um, so I'll just start it now. So there it goes. As you can see, the performance hasn't really changed at all. It's because it's the shader to create this movement is always running anyway, no matter what. Whether you use grass or not, it's always running. So you're still paying for the price for it <coughs> anyway. Even if you don't want moving grass, you're still paying for it, uh, which is not much, but um, probably. I'd have to really check on that. But as you can see, it's nice and smooth. There's no jagginess. Now, how did I get it to be so smooth? Because you only want to change one of the settings. You don't want to change, see that? It goes up, goes down, nice and smoothly. Um, okay, so every 100, 100 milliseconds, I'm changing the something in the code, which is the wind strength. <clears throat> so there's, there's, there's two things in the wind that you can change. One is wind strength. And the other one is wind speed. Now I found if you change the wind speed uh, during the game dynamically, it'll 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 make it look terrible because it will center it and then re 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 recalculate the speed every time you make a change. So it'll it'll, it'll jump around like crazy. It'll look just absolutely terrible. <clears throat> so my, so to get around that, just don't change this wind speed at all. Get that figure as high as you can while it still looks good with a little bit of movement because you notice grass by default is always moving a little bit um, let's change out the, the grass with a, a clearer one like uh, make it a bit clearer so something like that as you can see it's always going to be moving a little bit and that's normal so what I tend to do is to fix the, the, the jumping around problem that it was having only change the wing strength so get this figure wind speed up as high as possible whilst and this wing strength down as low as possible because that's the only one I'm going to be changing <clears throat> uh, so that it still looks good so if I change that say to five it's going to be even stationary see looks wrong it's just it's bouncing around too fast that's just doesn't look right so I found about 2.5 is is pretty is the highest I can get it while still looking okay when there's not much wind uh, seems okay to me and I'll just be changing the wind strength um, yeah so I press like P it turns on a, a variable and then this this every hundred milliseconds just checks have you have you turned on change wind speed variable to true yes it's true so now it's going to be doing <clears throat> so what it does is yeah so there's my little code if it's under a certain limit um, then increase and once you get over a certain limit then it decreases so it only checks the lowest amount and the highest amount and in between it's smooth it's smoothly going up and smoothly going down so it's only for test purposes in my game I'll, I'll link that to the wind speed of course but um, yeah so as you'll be able to see this is one way around the problem it's probably the only way around the problem I've tried to change the source code and it, I couldn't really get very far with it so that doesn't look too bad. Not much wind. P, start the wind effect. Obviously, I'm running every 100 milliseconds. If I run it even faster, it'll look even smoother. So maybe every 50 milliseconds, <clears throat> that'll be smooth enough that you can't see any slight movement, uh, jagginess uh, at all whatsoever. But even even like that, it's pretty good, isn't it? I can't really see any issues with it. Not much, anyway. So it speeds up, speeds down. Pretty smooth. Yeah, it's smooth enough. To me, that's smooth enough. I can't see any problem. Um, so always trying to reduce things running every frame because that's what eats up your performance, really, more than anything. It's that. Um, there you go. So that the whole thing, all running throughout the whole level. I'm obviously, I'm not using any LOD system or, or occlusion culling or distance culling or anything like that. That's more optimal. It's better if you do that, but... You can't use that with the default 
terrain plants because it's built into the terrain <clears throat> without changing a massive change in the source code. I don't think you want to do that. You can just manually place the plants around your level where you want it and put that in an array at, uh, under a folder and that folder you could use that as an array of data and distance check as the play is moving around if you wanted to to, to um, uh, you know if you wanted to change you wouldn't have LEDs with just the default things it's just two boxes in X configuration there's nothing there's no LED system there but if you wanted close up really high detail high polygon plants then you would need to do that and and the ones that are far away you can just put them as like this with a, with a little X configuration that's what it is it's all all it is it doesn't look too bad even how it is but this you know obviously right now there's a few issues you can see when you're at that angle you can see it's it's like <laughs> invisible almost um, that's the limitation but from from a distance you wouldn't know it's pretty good you use that that's good for long distance um, but up close if you really want the highest quality you would swap them out with an LOD system to give you high polygon better high polygon local plants but that would use up a lot more polygons too and so that's another problem yeah so as you can see it <clears throat> It runs smooth. It's fine, completely fine. That's the default copy cube uh, shader of uh, in, uh, of source code in copy cube. If you want to do it, this is what this is one way to f to fix the problem of that j jumping around and jagginess. Uh, I only recently figured this out. Didn't notice it before. So only change the wind strength, not the wind speed. Don't touch the wind speed because it'll look terrible. Um, okay, so that's that. So Okay, so here's here's the source code. C scene manager .cpp. This is the wind spring, uh, grass movement and grass factor. Gra that which is wind strength is a grass factor. Grass movement is the wind speed. And that's the one I don't change. Um, okay, I made a change here just to test it out. But so f is just a variable, an internal variable. It's got access to the time. <clears throat> for some reason it needs access to that time for it to work. I've just got rid of the default situation and just multiplied by a fixed variable. It does the same thing, but it's just obviously this is a little bit simpler and I don't know, it seems better to me, but anyway. Um, but basically, I couldn't change that. So there's the variable there. It says and f, but that's just C weird, weird stuff to say that's the variable name. Um, that's, that's the text, the text name of the variable, and that's the actual variable amount. <clears throat> so that's that's setting the vertex shader constant inside the whatever shader you're using so there's two shaders one is um, a high level shader uh, that's if you've got if you've got shadows you've turned shadows on and using that in your game it'll automatically use a high level shader for that and for everything in the game <clears throat> but you only get four point lights that's it no more but if you use the default one and you don't use shadows which I don't because it's a performance hog like nothing else um, then you can get 10 point lights or 9 point lights and one directional light and um, <clears throat> it still works the same it still works all the same um, so it uses registers in the uh, it's called a low level shader or a fixed function pipeline I think they call it uh, it has more performance than the, the HL LS shader high level shader uh, which is weird but um, the only good thing about using hi high level shaders HL SL is that you can dynamically change things a lot easier whereas the default thing you, it's a lot harder it's very hard actually because uh, it's all fixed for the most part fixed some things can be changed you still you can send send through vertex uh, sh update constants yeah set through the constants and update it <clears throat> this one HL SL is just a lot more dynamic and add new stuff to it um, a lot easier whereas this uh, the low level shader not so much uh, so this is saying okay my drawing with shadows okay then put the uh, update the vertex shader constant into register 28 so that's like a question mark uh, it's like an if then statement if that is true then update this one otherwise use that one uh, and then uh, um, yeah not sure what that one means uh, I think that's is that the variable you put one into that register I'm not sure anyway so there's an array just uses array <clears throat> uh, 
uh, and the first index of that array equals the um, f, which is the the grass speed. It says here grass movement, but it's actually grass speed. Uh, in case you're wondering, the shader that runs, if you're using shadows, it's this one under scene manager shaders dot h h HLS level shadow map shaders. That's only if you're using shadows switched on in your game, which is uh, real time shadows. If you're using that, it'll switch the shader to use this shader now. And yeah, it's it works pretty much the same. Slight differences, as you can see, the color changes a little bit and all that. Not too much, um, but it's uh, a little bit not as performant which is interesting because you, you can only have four four point lights in this four lights um whereas in the uh, the, the, the 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 fixed function pipeline or the low level shader you can have 10. <clears throat> so <laughs> i don't know i think the other the low level shader to me sounds pretty good if you uh, 10 lights sounds pretty awesome i can do a 10. four is just just to me is very very limited because uh it's just you don't want to be moving around a level and it's cutting out lights. It's switching between the four closest ones all the time. You're getting lights popping in and popping out all the time. It's, uh, it looks silly. Um, but 10, you can do 10. I can do 10. It's all right. I would like more, but 10 is all right. Um, okay, so there's your directional light. So it just adds the directional light. There's the, uh, see that? There's a for, for loop. This is a C++ code of uh, copy cube, Z zero to four as well zero to three so that's four four different lights so it's doing a for loop over the array light positions <coughs> one over one over the uh, distance and normalizes it and uh, yeah it, it works out the angle the distance and then some other factor it multiplies in and uh, it just keeps adding the, the lights the four lights together to get the the end light result adding back into the directional light so that's the shader for shadow map if you turn on real-time shadows that's what runs <clears throat> but um, you can change stuff in here too but um, I'm not sure what would happen if I upgraded this to, to four or more lights it probably wouldn't run like anything C++ everything is so independent with each other and so many linkages you change one thing you break the whole program it's always the case um, but anyway there's another shader for normal map you're doing normal maps uh, years ago, Copper Cube only had two lights it would use, one and two. One and two colors, that's it. And, and the big improvement was when, when it went from two lights to four. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's not very, not good enough in my opinion. But anyway, um, there's the, that's, that's the normal shader for normal maps, four lights. Wow, four lights, yeah, okay. Um, there it is. And then you've got one for each light, one, two, three, four, uh, and it adds them all up together. So, I mean, theoretically, you could probably extend that. I'd, you'd probably end up breaking it like usual. But, um, yeah, I'm not going to even... I don't think I even tried doing that. So, anyway, this will fix the grass movement jerkiness when you want to dynamically change it in the game. You just follow what I said. Uh, if you want really large levels, you're going to want to use the Copy Cube Terrain System. So, I think my next job is to fix up that uh, texturing Level, uh, texture one, two, and three, not just based on the height, but also the angle, uh, the normal, or the normal, we'll call it the normal angle. Uh, normals, the normals they call it, yeah. So, which relates to the angle of the surface. Um, I should get to work on that. So anyway, um, as a bit of an update, you can, uh, it's about smooth grass, you can, you can have it in CopyCube. Hope you like that. Cheers.